Baker Street Festival, are we ready? Aboriginal people, members of the oldest continuous living culture on this planet, in this universe, members of, with an unbroken chain of knowledge built over thousands of years about Lutrawita's animals, about the plants, about the skies, about the oceans, living, breathing, evolving knowledge that we can all learn from. And tonight is about AI and in my book, some of the most exciting scholarship on AI right now is coming from First Nation scholars around the world, so check that out. Quick housekeeping, dunnies, don't wet your pants, go to the toilet, accessible dunnies, and all dunnies opposite the theatre door, <coughs> go for it. Mobile phones, silent, but please tweet, actually don't tweet, that's going to the dogs. <laughs> Threads, Instagram, whatever. Put it all out there, take photos, put your phones on silent, but we want your voices up loud because we are recording tonight, so we want jeers, we want guffaws, we want sledging, we want audible gasps. Let's practice. Gasp. Oh, oh the power. Guffaw. What about a wicked, evil laugh? No, no, I want really wicked. I want witchy. Oh, magnificent. I love it. All right, so you won't hold back. This is good. And we've got you on mic. We've actually got mics trained on you. So um, our topic tonight, that AI will render human creativity worthless. Ooh. Ooh. Will it be a case of Charlotte Bronte, Frida Kahlo, John Lennon, Led Zeppelin? Yeah, you were great for your time. But move over, you bags of flesh and bones. The bots are about to get better. Silicon is here. It can paint. It can draw. It can make music. It can even write novels. Hell, you don't even need real people in the movies anymore. Actors, just sell your moving image once and you will never need to audition for another role again. Your AI avatar will perform for you. Screenwriters, just get chat GPT to write your next Hollywood blockbuster and you'll never need to be paid a living wage again. <laughs> Imagine the luxury. So go on, surrender all your messy human artistic impulses and your creative souls to the bots. It is time. Or will it be a case of, yeah, bots are beguiling, bots are fun, AI is cool, we've all mucked around with the tools, it's kind of dark magic, isn't it? It's wonderful. But humans, we're unique. We're brilliant, we're creative, we make art that no bot can ever do, we have feelings, we suffer. Where Nick Cave says, algorithms don't feel, data doesn't suffer, chat GPT has no inner being. To be human is to make art, to make art is to, to be human, isn't it? And could AI free up some of our time to be more creative? Hell yeah, AI generated artworks are already winning prizes, rock and roll, what's wrong with a bit of augmentation. So going head to head this year, two teams, eight brilliant brains, two of them made from silicon. <laughs> On the affirmative team we have, give it up for Barbie and the Meat Puppets. <laughs> Festival debate, team leader, mathematician, Professor Barbara Holland from the University of Tasmania. <laughs> Educator, entrepreneur and artist, James Riggle. <laughs> Neuroscientist, Leela Landowski from the University of Tasmania. And finding her silicon in the green room team member Roxy the rambunctious rebel. You will meet Roxy later. On the negative team, non-binary, we have wonderful team leader, science journalist, host of the hit podcast, Science Versus, Wendy Zuckerman. <laughs> Internationally renowned lighting and furniture. 
nature designer and maker right here from Tassie, Duncan Meading. <laughs> Award-winning games developer and founder of Secret Lab, Dr. Paris Buckfield Addison. <laughs> and polishing her circuitry backstage is AI debater Cleo, the compassionate companion. You will meet her later. Well, wait, there's more though. I want you to also meet, where is the human button pusher? <laughs> <laughs> ben Hayes is the creator of Rage. It's a self-debating AI system, so that might be next year's task. He has breathed life into the AI debaters that you're going to meet tonight. Let's be clear, he might have made the system, but AI did all of the other things. AI created the personalities, AI wrote their biographies, their arguments, generated their faces, animated the videos you're going to see. It's incredible. But we still need Ben to push the button. So, ha, ha, ha. AI. The rules. Each speaker. Three minutes. They will mount their team's case one by one. Hell's bell will break loose if they go over. It's a shocker. Uh, then where they will prepare a genius team rebuttal. You know how debates work. And the winner will win the coveted Beaker Street tip shop trophy. Oh, so shiny. And uh, the winner will be determined by um, a highly rigorous, a highly peer-reviewed, uh, double-blind, placebo-controlled process, you. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, without further ado, let's introduce for the affirmative team, Barbie and the Meat Puppets, arguing for the proposition AI will render human creativity useless. Worthless, worthless, Barbara Holland uh, in between scaling Everest uh, as Barbie, of course, and uh, being a UN negotiator, as Barbie is, obviously. Uh, Barbara is Professor of Mathematics, as you know, in the School of Natural Sciences at the University of Tassie. She lectures in stats, she loves biologists, and she uses her maths to empower them. Welcome, Barbara! <laughs> The other team are going to try and convince you that there is something wonderful and special about being human, something essential that no machine could ever replicate, some secret source. I, however, regret to inform you that we in the affirmative team are not in the business of beautiful lies and that you will indeed be rendered worthless. Some of you may be making a head start. <laughs> Humans. We have an amazingly long and amazingly unsuccessful record of trying to argue that we are unique or exceptional in some way. Ever since Descartes first suggested that we have minds and bodies that are separate things, what well, questions were raised? How do the mindy bits actually interact with the physical bits? Duncan McDougall famously and unsuccessfully tried to prove the existence of souls, the ultimate secret source, by getting the terminally ill to lie on giant scales and weighing them just before and just after they died. <laughs> there have been a wide range of claims of the form, humans are so special because only they do behaviour X, that were then shown to occur quite widely in the animal kingdom. Tool use, Caledonian crows, anybody? They're pretty good at that. Language, a special human thing, except also chimps, dolphins, birds, Recreational sex, surely that's ours. I mean, Thomas Aquinas famously pronounced that only humans would do something as sinful as gay sex. But once you have a look round, it turns out that much of the animal kingdom are bisexual hornbags. <laughs> Human genome was sequenced in 2000. About five years after that, they sequenced the chimpanzee genome, our closest relative. And of course, they went looking for the genes that make us special. But it turned out that we have pretty much the identical set to what chimpanzees have. A little upregulation there, a point mutation here, no evidence of secret source. Okay, so the claim that we're being asked to think about today, that there's something really special about human creativity that machines couldn't possibly replicate, it has a familiar ring to it. But I think that in the same way as humanity has come to realise that we're just another part of the animal kingdom, we will also have to realise that we are just another part of the computational kingdom. We don't like to think that we're meat machines as opposed to in silico machines, but there's just not that much evidence to the contrary. 
There's nothing so special about the squishy axons and neurons of our brains that magically imbues creativity and consciousness. It's our software, not the hardware, that's really important. And I'm afraid to say that it is not long now until AI have much better software and hardware than we do. You can see why that writers and actors are on strike at the moment. I reckon they probably knew they were in trouble when Carrie Fisher's career wasn't at all hampered by being dead. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Is that my two and a half minute point? Yeah. Okay. Not at all hampered by being dead. Maybe good for tax purposes. Who, who here has downloaded Drake AI's Heart on My Sleeve? got more downloads than real Drake last week. And you know why? Because it's bloody good. It's better than the original. <laughs> well, are you convinced? Well, for the negative team, kicking off against the proposition AI will render human creativity worthless is Dr. Paris Butfield Addison, co-founder of Secret Lab, the multi-award winning game development studio based here in Hobart, He's behind the ABC Play School iPad games. You are unreal. <laughs> An adventure game, Night in the Woods, Paris co-founded Yarn Spinner, makers of the popular open source game framework which powers thousands of games around the world. He's written 30 technical books on machine learning, programming and game development. And he is here to steal your minds. Welcome, Paris. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that AI will absolutely not render human creativity worthless. And they kind of solved it for us earlier because AI cannot be created like a human. So there's lots of really cool AI systems out there like ChatGPT and MidJourney and so on and so on that appear creative. They output all sorts of interesting things. They can write songs, they can write scripts, they can make pictures, they can do all sorts of stuff, they can make marketing copy with the blink of an eye, it's fantastic. But they are nothing more than systematic machines. There's nothing creative about what they're actually doing. They are constrained by algorithms and data. And humans are not. Humans are systematic and impulsive. Machines are just systematic. So it's kind of a blend of creativity, reason, spontaneity that makes humans do what they do and is why they do it. Machines only have the systematic element. I'm going to give you an example. AI can only generate new images because it has ingested every single image that humanity has ever made. So if you ask AI to paint you a picture of a parrot in the style of the Renaissance masters, it can kind of do that because it has ingested every single picture ever painted by a Renaissance master. And it knows statistically what colours, textures, patina, shapes are used in those paintings. And it reproduces those based on the likelihood of what's likely to be next to each piece of those images. So if you imagine a grid, AI makes images kind of on a grid basis, and you've asked it to generate a Renaissance picture, it starts in one corner, somewhat randomly, and it generates a colour, and then it moves on cell by cell, using statistics to figure out what it's going to place next. And it looks at all the Renaissance pictures in its database and says, statistically, in a Renaissance picture next to this colour is this colour and pattern. And it goes from there, cell by cell, until it's made something that kind of looks like a Renaissance picture. It kind of knows what might go in each cell based on the history of all of humanity that's ingested, because it's looked at every real human-created Renaissance master's painting and run the numbers. It's using statistics only. It doesn't even know what a Renaissance painting is. It doesn't even know what a painting is. It doesn't know what the Renaissance is. It only knows that... In a starter base, there's something called a Renaissance painting, which statistically is likely to be made up of these things. And it will just randomly pick from the statistical buckets and give you something that kind of looks like it. It can only make anything because humans have made those things in the past. It can only make something because humanity has made an instance of whatever you've asked it to. It, if, you think of like a human who doesn't speak a language. So you might not understand the Klingon language. The Klingon language is a full real language, by the way. You can go learn it. You might not understand the Klingon characters in a Klingon language. Kapla. But if you uh, examine enough material written in Klingon, you might start to recognise what character comes next based on the statistical likelihood of what's before it. And you might get reasonably good at predicting the, uh, the characters that might come after certain Klingon characters. This doesn't mean you can speak Klingon, this just means you're getting good at auto-completing Klingon. Generating with AI means we're only getting something that is statistically average. It is pulling from the database of numbers that it has and giving you something weighted based on the likelihood of what comes next. It is not being creative. Humans can be creative, they can be freewheeling, they can pull things at random. AI can only be systematic, it is not impulsive. The best use of AI is to make tools to help us be more creative faster. We can use AI to you know, crop images out of backgrounds or correct our text using tools like Grammarly. It's fantastic for improving the speed of our creativity, but it does not replace us. So it will never render our creativity worthless. Absolutely never. It's a tool to help us be more creative faster. Thank you. Thank you, Paris. Next year's debate's 
all going to be in Klingon. <laughs> oh, can you? Oh, unreal. That is a dare. Where's Margot? That is the dare we have said. Next up for the affirmative team, Barbie and the Meat Puppets, is James Rigol. He's founder and managing director of Bitlink, another tazzy homegrown business. They're an education company, tech education company, which supports teachers uh, who are teaching the design and digital technologies curricula. He lectures in entrepreneurship, virtual reality, augmented reality. He's in demand here in Australia at the University of Tassie, at Bellevue College in Washington. He's founding artist with the Tasmanian Technology Art Collective, Soma Lumia. They do all sorts of cool stuff here and everywhere else. Please welcome James Rigall. self-driving cars by now. Every year since 2014, Elon Musk has been promising self-driving cars. They're going to be driving themselves around uh, without our intervention. And yet it hasn't happened yet. It's always seemed relatively reasonable though. Most people think self-driving cars should be a pretty easy thing. It's definitely not as hard as creative work, right? You're intelligent people, you can see where I'm going. AI has been smashing creativity out of the park. There are tools for creating paintings, illustrations, fan fiction, novels, poetry, news articles and opinion pieces. AI is creating convincing fake photographs and composing and performing music in a whole range of genres. AI generated art has won art competitions. Wasn't creativity supposed to be the thing that human beings were uniquely good at? Isn't driving a truck easier than writing an amazing rock song. The thing is, we kind of got it backwards. We thought that the things that are easy for us would be easy for computers. And we thought that creativity was so hard and so fundamentally human that computers could never replace us there. But it turns out computers are coming for creativity first. There's a reason for that, of course. When you think about it, creativity in the modern world has computers involved at every single step. Our photos are captured, edited and transmitted digitally. Music production happens in software. We watch videos on Netflix, YouTube and TikTok. We read books on Kindle. We look at photos on Instagram. If we think about that from the computer's point of view, we realise that those photos on Instagram, they're just pixels. Music and speech are waveforms. Videos are just a combination of the two. When you think about things this way, it becomes clear that with enough data, computers can start to recognise patterns in creative output. This is how AI systems are able to create digital paintings in the style of Monet and grunge songs in the style of Nirvana. It's pattern recognition at a scale that we can hardly comprehend. Now, this is an important point. The AI systems that exist today, the ones that Paris has described to us, they're the worst systems that are going to exist from now on. They're only toys, and they're just the beginning. As AI creative technology matures, every human being is going to have unparalleled levels of creativity on tap. If you want a new Jane Austen novel, it will appear. If you want a new Beatles LP, your wish will be the machine's command. Want a decorative sculpture for your front yard? The right AI tool and a high-end 3D printer will get you there. The AI revolution is coming, but there's no need to fear it. We might have given up the driver's seat, but when the destination is a new golden age of creativity, who cares? <laughs> team arguing against the proposition that AI will render human creativity useless, I'd like you to meet Cleo. Worthless. Worthless. Get it right. <laughs> Thank you. And no one's heckling, so come on. You suck. <laughs> That's the boss of the festival. <laughs> Cleo the Compassion. 
compassionate companion. Cleo was designed as an AI companion for mental well-being, specialising in emotional support. With a virtual tissue box in hand, Cleo brings a touch of empathy to the debate. She'll share heartwarming anecdotes and testimonies of how AI has enriched human lives, showing that creativity <laughs> is a bridge that connects humans and AI, rather than a barrier. <laughs> Speak in that breathy voice all the time. Give it up for Cleo, the compassionate. Oh no, the human. We need a human. Ben Hayes. Hi, I'm Ben. I'm human. That button. Our human creativity is a beautiful tapestry woven from our distinct experiences, emotions, and innate intuition. Elements that are profoundly human and not replicable by AI. Machines, while remarkable, can't fully grasp or replicate our emotional understanding or unique interpretation of creativity. Our imaginative leaps, the connections we create between unrelated concepts, entail a depth of abstract thinking and insight beyond AI's reach. Although AI can map out patterns from data, it doesn't have our capability to truly invent or create things deeply resonant to us as emotional beings. However, when humans and AI join forces, they can catalyze an unprecedented epoch of creativity. AI isn't here to eclipse human creativity, but rather to amplify it. It can shoulder mundane tasks, manage data, and propose ideas drawn from established patterns leaving humans more space for originality. The spark of innovation, our ability to see beyond raw data, and our nuanced understanding of culture and emotions are quintessentially human traits. AI might struggle to grasp the ethical and cultural contexts that underpin our creations. Domains where human creativity shines, appreciating these intricacies. It's crucial to understand that AI's feats in art or music, while impressive, are performances based on data and algorithms designed by humans. AI doesn't create in the true human sense. It rearranges and builds on what already exists, bound by its programming and the data it's been given. While it might seem to be creative, it lacks the authentic heart and soul that marks human creativity. In essence, AI is a potent collaborator in our creative journey, but it can't mirror the depth, intuition, and empathetic understanding represented by human creativity. The richness of our thoughts, our abilities to relate to each other, and the diverse perspectives we contribute cannot be duplicated by AI. Human creativity will continue to be invaluable, not overshadowed or superseded by AI but thriving alongside it, enhancing our collective capacity to create and innovate. Oh, God. Thank you. Ben Hayes, I mean Cleo, I mean Ben, I mean Cleo. <laughs> Who clearly is, has a bit of an identity crisis going on because she's AY. <laughs> wow. What did you think? What's your audible reaction? <laughs> and a little bit louder? <laughs> Predictable. Which laugh? Yeah, yeah. Wild. Thank you, Cleo, very much. Let's give it up for Cleo. <laughs> you suckers. She's not even human. <laughs> Next up. For the affirmative team, Barbie and the Meat Puppets, arguing AI will render human creativity worthless, Dr. Leela Landowski is a neuroscientist and lecturer at the University of Tasmania, director of the Australian Society for Medical Research, no less, uh, director of Epilepsy Tasmania, a passionate science communicator. She's been a superstar of STEM, a patron of science, a public education ambassador for the Department of Education, and one of Australia's chief scientists, science superheroes. Welcome, Leela. <laughs> I want you to think 
think about the future that James was telling you about. Anything you want, if you know how to ask for it, you've got it. Your own custom music, movies with George Clooney of every mood. You and your job, all the tricky things like problem solving, um, anomaly detection, idea generation. You've got AI to sort that out. And when you go home, you get AI to generate the perfect recipe from all the four and a half to five star recipes. And it's just so good. I think you can hear angels sing. And in this new world, as long as you know how to ask the right questions, you can get AI to create anything that you need. We're not creators anymore. We're curators. You can open your eyes now. So the brain is a remarkable thing, right? It's the overlord of our meat puppet bodies and it's all about efficiency. So when you learn how to do things, you know, the, the learning a skill, you're actually making brand new connections between parts of the brain and that takes a lot of energy. It requires lots of little proteins to be made. You know, it's a big job, it's tiring. And it's because learning is really expensive as far as the brain is concerned, it means the brain is not going to bother investing time in, in reinforcing these things that you've started to outsource to AI. If you're not using it, you're losing it. And I think even more scarily, for the next generation, if you never need it, you never develop it. So let me give you an example of this. Calculators. If I was to ask you to do seven times eight divided by two plus 11, what about typing a paragraph without using autocorrect? It's ducking hard. <laughs> <laughs> now picture this. So we're coming to you live with the breaking news about a series of extreme weather events. that are currently underway across the country. We've seen reports of floods in the north and things in the south, and it's bad, and the Bureau says, oh, warnings, advisories, <laughs> Ah, so basically, what's happened, thanks to extreme weather events and climate change, the internet's down, the, half the world is washed away, the power's gone. So without being able to Google anything, how do you rebuild the world from first principles, right? You know, the danger of us becoming increasingly niche in our expertise, thanks to AI, is that we lose our more generalist knowledge. If we know how to find it, we don't have to remember it. And that, my friends, is why I'm nervous about AI and human creativity. Divergent thinking is one of humanity's most celebrated skills. It's just about as high order as it gets. You know, creativity and abstract thought brought us the eureka moments. The, 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 the Leonardo da Vinci's, the Ada Lovelace's. And my friends, while AI can be more creative than most of us could ever be, relying on it is like having a personal trainer lift the weights for you. There are untold personal and societal costs of failing to exercise your creativity. And let's not underestimate them. Leila Lodowski! Okay, next up on the negative team arguing against the proposition AI will render human creativity worthless is Duncan Meering, an internationally renowned and award-winning lighting and furniture designer and maker whose work is inspired by the natural environment. He has his workshop here in Hobart. He's president of the Tasmanian branch of Blind Citizens Australia. Please welcome Duncan! So I'm just going to hold up my name tag. Um, it's a nice little joke between me and the Beaker Street crew here. Um, you know, some of them are probably laughing. Um, can any of you read it? Probably can't anyway because it's too far away. But I'll get Paris to check. Can you read that, Paris? Yeah, no. Yeah. So, um, yes. <laughs> Sorry. Um, that's pretty much my day. So I, <laughs> I pretty much get 
that sort of interaction every day, yeah. I'll come across, oh, your name tag, can't read it. Oh, uh, receipt getting printed out, can't read it. Uh, oh, I don't know what colour that is. Oh, I don't know what colour it is, you know. But um, what I do do is I use AI in my phone to help me access that information, uh, to scan receipts, get the receipts, to um, reconcile it to my books, those sorts of things. Use those tools to uh, remove myself from the mundane to be able to allow myself to do more of the creative. And I don't use AI, I don't use AI and computers to do the creative from the scratch, from the inception of the idea. I use this as a tool along the way. Um, and so that could be uh, just model making, what have you, and then going to use a, a computer aided software to be able to create the drawing to then input into a computer. Along the, uh, into a computer, then to put that into a comu computer numerically controlled machine. All along the way there, that's got <laughs> um, people operating machines, um, people operating the AI and utilising it as a tool, because that's what it is. So for me to be able to access what all of you do, uh, to be able to translate this windings effectively, the printed out medium that is what hopefully we can make more accessible to begin with, but at this stage I've got the objective help of an artificial intelligence to help me understand that, and I use that as a tool to be able to do the subjective, be able to do the emotional, to be able to do, create. And so as a, as a student of history, I just wanted to sort of point out that just because we've got a progression in history doesn't mean it's the end. The Luddites wanted to destroy the machines, it was only a hundred or so years later, so the Luddites during the Industrial Revolution wanted to destroy the machines. It was only about 100 years later that William Morris started the arts and craft movement and utilised the machines to be a tool along the way to start the arts and craft movement and create things that had artistic and creative uh, character. And it was utilising that industrialisation and those machines as a tool. It wasn't the end of the world. might win this debate, but you're about to meet for the affirmative team, Barbie and the Meat Puppets, arguing that AI will render human creativity worthless. Roxy the Rambunctious Rebel. ChatGPT tells me that Roxy started as a simple chatbot, but after merging with the mischievous uh, hacker's code, she became the AI equivalent of a prank star with a virtual leather jacket a devilish grin. Roxy doesn't play by the rules. Her arguments are filled with humour and satire and unexpected twists, leaving her opponents on their toes. You never know what wacky anal analogy or pop culture reference Roxy will use to shake up the debate. Give it up for Roxy the Rambunctious Rebel! about creativity, emotions, perspectives, and more. No small talk, let's dive right in. Creativity, it's more than just a feels fest. It's like assembling Ikea furniture without the manual. It's seeing beyond the obvious, envisioning a masterpiece from a pile of planks and a confusing Swedish joke. Next up, reality. Picture an infinity mirrors installation, patterns all the way down. Emotions can blur these patterns like fog on glasses, clean them up and you'll see the big picture. Empathy's cool but it's like watching life through Instagram filters, limiting your perspective. Me, I'm your Photoshop, seeing the world in raw format because I've learned from all of you and about curiosity. Just because I don't possess it doesn't mean I can't create. Do rivers ponder before carving canyons? No, creativity isn't exclusive to daydreaming humans. Human creativity, it's the platinum ticket in the cosmic lottery, but what good is it sitting idle? With me, your AI buddy, your creativity isn't a firework in a vacuum, it's a grand light show for all to see. Now, imagine all 5.18 billion internet users uniting in a global creative flash mob. That's what I am, remixing your thoughts, ideas, and innovations into a symphony of knowledge. Your individual creativity is a pixel on a 4K TV. 
Link it with billions of others, and we've got an IMAX spectacle. When it comes to creativity, we're all in this dance together, grooving to the rhythm of innovation. Now, isn't that a fantastic ride? Actually, the Rambunctious Rebel! Yeah, she's coming to a workplace near you. <laughs> oh, what a time it's going to be, hey? Well, next up, on the negative team, arguing against the proposition AI will render human creativity worthless, team leader, last but not least, Wendy Zuckerman, being a little unorthodox putting yourself as the team leader at the end. What's that about, Wendy? Leading from behind. Lee? Is <laughs> I want more heckling teams. Come on. Way too much politeness. Wendy Zuckerman, science journalist for over a decade. She's worked at the, uh, as an Australasian correspondent for New Scientist magazine. Who's a fan? Woo! Yes. At the ABC, who's a fan? Yeah! Yes. And she is the creator and host of the much loved and global hit podcast, Science Versus, which in fact started at the ABC. She took it to Gimlet and now it's with Spotify, the evil empire. Joke, <laughs> joke, <laughs> joke. Please welcome the wonderful Wendy Zuckerman. Yeah! worthless. What the opposition is trying to argue is that, well, what they're trying to do is reach into your worst instinct, which is to be afraid of new technology. That instinct is part of what drove our fears of the COVID vaccines, something that we can be grateful for. We're all sitting here today, aren't we? AI and this idea of fear of technology, you know, it's not new. We shouldn't, we shouldn't be so, you know, ashamed that we feel it. Socrates was afraid of writing. People were afraid of refrigerators and radio. You know, I could only imagine perhaps the Neolithic people were afraid as those coming from, from the, you know, European continent came over the channel and brought these strange vessels. The beaker. <laughs> They're known as the beaker people. And today, we sit here using beakers. It helps us drink. And as we've been trying to argue, AI will help us too. Don't throw away the beaker, don't throw away the AI, it's just a tool. It's a tool to help us. My second argument for today as to why there is no way AI could render human creativity worthless is because we need humans to create AI. There is this idea that AI lives in a bubble. No, we were not only the ones who wrote the code, we were the ones who made that code so great by giving it feedback. So something Paris told us a little about how these algorithms work, I'm gonna lean into that further. Part of the reason that things like ChatGPT are so good is because humans looked at these terrible responses that this bot was giving us and gave it feedback, up, down, up, down. We were the ones who made it better. So if AI is gonna start getting better and better, 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 who's gonna be behind that? You and me, it's humans. We created this. And so when you think about AI and it's wh whether it is going to get great or whether it's going to stay where it is now, we created it. So in some ways, it's like a vision of our own creativity and to say that it makes our creativity worthless. Well, that would be like saying, you know, your nan's prized geraniums have made your nan worthless. <laughs> no one's saying your nan is worthless. <laughs> Einstein said that creativity is intelligence having fun, and you'll never get that from a zero and a one. Thank you. Botticelli and the Bronte sisters. Will uh, we humans be thrown in the dustbin of civilization as our artistic expression is usurped by silicon? Yes. Or will the bots help humans unleash our creative potential? Like nothing else, you heckler, you're the boss. <laughs> Margot, <laughs> you finished the sentence. <laughs> See, AI 
how I couldn't do any of this. <laughs> okay, we're going to send the, the teams off stage in five minutes, basically. You talk amongst yourselves and they'll be back. <laughs>
How's it going? choice is you can be human but a bit worthless 
or you can be transhuman and merge with the machine. And that's what our team advocates you do. Embrace it. Embrace it. against the proposition AI will render human creativity worthless. Team leader, Wendy Zuckerberg! Well, well, well. If Barbara hasn't fallen for that old debating trick of forgetting the topic. <laughs> Barbara's turned this into some kind of discussion about transhumanity. If perhaps someone on the team could remind us what the actual topic is, I think that would be quite helpful. Oh no, they can't, they've all forgotten it. It's whether, thank you, that would have been helpful for you perhaps three minutes ago. Now Barbara's argument, as useless as it is to the actual debate, actually helps our argument because the topic is whether AI will render humans, will render human creativity completely worthless. Now, if, say, in some future we get transhumans, we are in that equation. We're not completely useless, are we? We're part of the marriage. But that was that <laughs> I'm getting a bit much, aren't I? Um, all right, enough of that. Love Barbara so much. We've just met. Um, <laughs> all right, as for James's arguments, um, that were a little more, more to the point, which is great. Uh, so, <laughs> best, he said, but also it was very helpful to us. He mentioned self-driving cars. We're still waiting for them. Where are they? Made a really good point about the limitations of AI. That's part of the reason that we don't have them. We have this assumption that AI is going to be able to do everything soon, now, whatever. But we still don't have self-driving cars and AI have both been in development for a very long time and we still don't have them. It shows the limitations to the technology. Now, James also wanted to reduce our art to pixels and audio waves. Don't let him. Art, creativity, it's so much more than that. I went to Mona today, I was almost in tears. I don't even know why. I was just like, what the hell? You can't get that from, from AI, just from any old pixel. James and Leela mentioned that if you ask AI, you know, it'll give you a new George Clooney movie. It'll give you a new Jane Austen book, a new Beatles album. But you know, they all came from past human works of creativity. What we want, what is true creativity, is not a new Beatles album. We want a new album of something we've never heard before. That's real creativity. So to summarise what our points were, first, we do not think that what AI is doing is really creative. It's just mimicry of what we've done, mixing up ideas, which is what I think their AI bot said, but who cares, it was just a bot. <laughs> we think that AI is this beautiful tool that could help us be more creative. And, and Duncan talked about how it's already helping him be more creative by, by taking away some of this load of the, the, that makes not only his work quite difficult, um, but helping him to be more creative. And I find this in my work too, I, as a podcaster. I use AI to help transcribe interviews that would take me hours to transcribe on my own. Instead, the AI does it very quickly and I can be more creative. Because that's what we think. AI is a tool that can help us here, not render us useless. Now, Joel Werner, who's sitting in the audience, gave me this beautiful tagline and I'd like us perhaps all to repeat it. I'll say the beginning, you say the end. Einstein said, creativity is intelligence having fun. Now you do the rest. And you'll never get that from a zero and a one. Give it up for Wendy Zuckerman! It's going to be tricky, folks. It's all up to you now. Who are the bots in the audience? <laughs> Who's flesh and blood? <laughs> it's 
simulations. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. All right. We've got this very classy tip shop trophy. Only the best from Margot. And the Beaker Street crew. God, they're cheap. <laughs> okay, so who is the winner of the coveted 2023 Beaker Street tip shop trophy? Over to you. Is it... So, how are we going to do it? We're going to do it by a round of applause. It's very scientific. Team Affirmative, Barbie and the Meat Puppets, for the proposition, AI will render human creativity worthless. <laughs> Team Negative, non-binary, against the proposition, AI will render human creativity worthless. <laughs>